Hi guys! How are you doing? I'm so good to see you! <laughs> Today's title of this video is It's meant to be. Because what am I going to tell you now? You're going to be like blown away. Completely. Okay, so yesterday I supposed to go and do a little job which I completely forgot about because I was occupied then with who is the second person who wrote to the landlord uh, in January this year saying that I'm illegal when I wasn't and the Home Office was processing my documents and at also that time the Home Office said I'm not allowed to work for five months while they're doing all this uh, processing which means I had to survive on my own money hence why I'm going home with very little money. So yesterday was occupied with that and I needed to speak to someone. So I was in town and I realized when I saw the shop I was supposed to be here. Oh, I forgot what, I forgot the tablet because I had to put a protective cover over it. And the guy said he will, you know, on Wednesday I can come in. So I went in and I told the guy, do you mind if I come in tomorrow because I forgot the tablet? And he's like, yeah, I promise is a promise. I keep my promise, so I'll see you tomorrow. So, so today I took my time to meditate and just calm down and released everything that happened yesterday. And um, I went with my tablet to the shop after seeing the time and said, okay, it's lunchtime, you have your lunch first. Then we take our time and go to that shop and enjoy the lovely sunshine outside because it's nice and hot out there. So went with my tablet and there was another guy and I told him his colleague said I can come in and here's the card and this is the discount he said he's going to give me and we've done all the things we had to do. And then I walk out of the shop and I see this little dog who's, who, it didn't even hit my mind whether I recognized the little dog or not. But the dog saw me and shot in the direction, he's, she was on a leash and shot in the complete opposite direction running to me. So the owner was there and the dog went pew, and came in my direction. And the owner was like, monkey, what are you doing? And then I looked at the owner and I said, I know the dog because of the owner, but the dog recognized me like first. And how sharp is that? And so I used to see this dog when I was going on, coming back from work usually at about say five, five, 10, five, 15 when, the owner was taking Isabel, the dog's name, for a walk. And she was always called Bella. Actually, she's called Bella. <laughs> Bella, yes. Um, and so I just made up Isabella from somewhere. But it's, she's called Bella. And the owner, I saw the owner and I was like, hey, she recognized me. She came shooting in my direction to say hello, right? I never, and I never even pet the dog before. I just used to say, hi, Bella, because I was always with my laptop. Like, it was heavy, and I never bent down and pet the dog, right? So um, the owner and I used to exchange a few words, like, hi, and bye, and she's enjoying the walk today. It's a lovely day, and things like this, right? And so the dog, we stopped and talked because of Bella, and it was amazing because... I get to say goodbye to this woman I always used to see her in the evenings, not on the during the day like today. And so I I pet the dog and the dog was so there was a connection. There was such a connection. I can't explain it. I would say bye to the dog. Bella today. The dog and I had this connection. I don't know. Just the minute I put my hand on her fur and pet her, she was like, she, there was a connection. 
definitely a connection there. For her to come hopping, running to me, like to see me first before I even saw her. That's such... A dog is such a, a pure thing. So much more pure than any... I don't know, than any animal I know. So loyal. No ego. None of that rubbish. So there's another thing that happened after seeing this saying goodbye to the store. Bella and the owner and said to the owner, I'm going away. Um, they all asked how long. I feel like I'm going away for a year. I don't know, for some stupid reason. I don't know. But um I realized, well, I don't have milk, so much milk at home and I thought to myself, do you want to really go and buy milk when you're just going to use it for, for what, three days and it's going to go for waste? But then I said, I feel like having a coffee now and I don't even drink coffee. So God knows why I want a coffee now. So I bought milk, but I went into the waitress around the corner and got my milk there because I like the milk from there. And guess who I see at the counter? <laughs> This is, um, this is like, out of all days today, I see at the counter the South African man who we used to chat there for hours. He, was, he's, uh, he left Durban, he's married, he's got an older son, and uh, he was working as a cashier, and he was there. And I usually, like, he saw my books as well, and he was like, I'm going to buy your book, and so supportive and everything, and... Then I went to office with my milk and I said, just the man I want to see. And then I told him the news and he was like, you leaving? I'm like, yeah, it's a long story. And I got to say bye to him. These are the people I usually used to see on a daily basis in my duties, in my chores. And I'm saying bye to them naturally, meant to be way. I, I don't know, it's incredible. How much people you see in, in the last week alone than the whole month to just say bye to and it just happens naturally. I am impressed. These are the positive things, positive things in life that we should look at. You know, those politicians make people look bad. The whole country look bad. There's, yeah, there is some people who are a reflection of them, but not everyone. Not everyone, and I sometimes in the in the day when it's all coming to you, so all the negative is coming to you. You don't see the you. You just can sometimes get so blind about about some things. But but friendship in the UK still remains a question to me with the British. There's there's a there's a that that gap really needs to get sorted there's there's something different in africa about the way we make friends to here there's my bro my brother still has his friends from and they're not fake friends he's from the time that they were teenagers they were they, they even till today with their wives and their children they hang out you know there's there's this this I just I believe that the key to some to real connection has to have that breakdown sometimes has to have that problem for people to get closer otherwise they will never understand each other and later in life people say why we can't we're not making friends is because they're not ready to go through the the process I think it's an investment and it's a process it's a process it is how come you can be friends with your sister all your life there's a process and you still get angry and you still have arguments but then sister is sister you know I'm not saying blood is blood but this is some understanding there that there's always an unconditional love and forgiveness and yet we can't do this with 
for people we're trying to invest friendship with. It's always call me if you need me. Why can't you pick up the phone and call me? Do you not count the times that someone else picked up the phone to call you or, or made the effort to come and meet with you? Or why push it back on them? It's a game. It's, it's, it's a very arrogant game to play. Life is too short for that. <laughs>